<laughs> okay. So, today on uh, Boy Overboard TV, there will be a subject of Janana. She is a, I classify her as a European babe. And she is um, naturally very dark haired, um, but she likes it bright and light. So we like to lift her up to a nice um, pale yellow blonde. And um, she's one of also my extension clients. So today we'll get to know Janana and we get to know a little bit of her beauty secrets and uh, her style and her personal style and the way uh, her hair is prepared. So we'll see what happens at the end of this episode. <laughs> All right, here we go. Well, my name is Janana Kapina. I am 30 years old and I am from uh, Mostar, Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is located in eastern part of Europe. Um, fifth, about 18 years ago, uh, we had a civil war um, between, you know, the three religions. Uh, four and a half of those years, I've survived with my family and uh, we didn't know what was going on. We just knew that like in our neighborhood, they started to packing things, like our neighbors started just to pack and leave for other cities for safety. Uh, we never really thought that nothing really serious is gonna be with that war. Uh, so my father, which he was all against the wars and everything he never believed like oh everything will be fine it will end tomorrow nothing's going on but then my mom and my dad and my sister are the only ones in the neighborhood that's when we really said okay we need to get out to safety for a few years we lived um, in another part of the city where it was a little bit safer but every day for about three years, every day, every hour, every minute, all we listened was fire shots and um, the grenades. I mean, all day, every day, every minute. And imagine your life without no electricity, no water, no toothbrush, no food. I mean, it was terrifying. Later on, we thought the war stopped for a few weeks. They said, the government said, okay, we're gonna make peace. But after a few weeks later, another part of that war started, which was like even most horrible that so many things personally I witnessed as for example, my uncle burning, or, or just a girl, 18 years old, she was crucified like a Jesus Christ, and 10 of the soldiers kept raping her and raping her till she just gave up, she died. We, we had to come up with a plan, like we didn't know, it was definitely, it, it was so bad that you know they started every day every other hour uh, these soldiers they were coming in uh, to house from house to house um, separating women and children away from men and boys where they were taking them we personally didn't know uh, if they were taking them somewhere to safety, like they said, it was okay, I guess, but they were taking them to these camps where they would interrogate them, rape them, uh, just do a massacre. Males, they would definitely do a brutal thing on. I mean, males never came back. But my cousin, the cousin that he was like a brother to me a long time ago, he never came back. His mom was a single mom. They have an amazing life. 
uh, she lived for him and they took him. One day they came to her house, his best friend came to pick him up and his mom was asking, he was, a, he was about 21 years old and his mom was asking, where are you taking him? Oh no, nothing, it's gonna be fine. It's just a little interrogation that we are doing. Um, he knew that he's not gonna come back. So his mom was like, okay, you know, I'll see you soon. And uh, they took him to this bus and all you see, five, six, seven, eight buses, only males. On the other side, you see five, six, seven buses, only women and children. My cousin every day tried to escape because how horrible they were treated. I mean, just, oh my gosh, beaten every day. Food and drink, water, forget it. We were the only civilians left in the city, except my aunt in her house. She stayed waiting for her son and we left. My dad was in the hospital because he thought he would be safe over there. He was ill. Um, his illness had gotten kind of worse. He was a diabetic. And uh, he died over there in the hospital. And uh, we took the last bus. We didn't know where we were going. Luckily, he took us to a different state. We were in an island and we spent there about nine months living in a one tent with 10 families, uh, sleeping on a rocks. But rocks is better where the other people were sleeping, which is bodies under bodies. So talking about my cousin, my aunt was writing my mom a letters every day, which I have all the letters. And uh, she came in the, her last letter, somebody was calling her name one day, like, oh, I can't, this is so emotional. <laughs> um, her son never really called her mom, you know, he was uh, a young, rebellious boy, you know, always getting in trouble, um, but a good student. And uh, she heard a name, Vera, and she goes, you know, on her balcony, and it was him. So she flew downstairs, and he was just, um, he didn't have nothing on, just a pair of pants, you know, the jeans that he um, had that day, six, seven months ago. And um, she was like, oh my gosh, are you back, you know? He says, no, I gotta go back again. And she was like, I don't understand. Yeah, I'll be back, you know, this time I will be really back. But when they hugged each other, he knew. He started, like, crying, and uh, he knew he wasn't coming back. He just told her mom, you know, I love you. And that was the last time he saw her. So she, my aunt died a few months ago, a few months later. So basically, you know, when we were living in that island, every day we tried, you know, my mom was trying to contact people, like how, how are we gonna get out of there? Because, uh, you know, you could catch all these diseases and um, we were eating, we ate like rice and water for like eight months only. It was just a horrible experience as well in there, I mean, sharing one bathroom with a thousand of people. Thank God, um, my uncle that lived in Italy found out and thanks to the church in about 10 days, in about a few weeks, we were ready to go and start our life to Italy. Sardinia, Cagliari, beautiful city. Uh, when we moved to Italy, we found out that my uncle passed, then my dad passed. It was just, you know, everybody knew. 
that you knew for your whole life, all your closest family members are gone. House is burned, you know, your property that your parents worked for their whole life, stolen. I mean, nothing. We didn't have anything. But thank God, you know, we stayed alive because, you know, going through, you know, that hell, I don't even know how, you know, we really made it. I, I thank as well, mostly my mom. She fought so hard, you know, to, to get us out of there, to get her two little girls because she wouldn't want to see nobody hurting them, you know. Okay, so this is the final product. Um, it was about four, it's, what is it, a little after 11 maybe? And we started a little after eight, so it's not too bad. And this is a style, uh, this is my second time doing extensions on her, and uh, the first time we did more of a wispier, thinner type of feel, but this time around, uh, we kind of talked about it and we wanted to try something different and it's a little more fuller but there is still lots of texture with her hair and um you know there's like lots of like sharp points which we love especially with her style you know being this long if it was any more fuller it would look like you basically just put like a piece of wig underneath you know and we want it to be very seamless uh she had some short pieces through the front so we just kind of worked the extensions through. When she first came to me about two years ago, mm -hmm. almost, uh, wow. she was box color black. Yes. Several, t she was box coloring her hair. How long were you doing it? For two about years before that? Four years. Four years, mm -hmm. root to end, mm -hmm. root to end every wow. time. And we got her here. Yeah. And naturally her hair goes to right about here. And then with the extensions, it just kind of gives her an enhancement. Mm -hmm. And then uh, obviously, um, if you move on over here, I did some flaxseed oil, uh, some smooth infusion, volumizing tonic, and a little bit of spray oil. And then I finished with uh, Rockaholic Fun Times. Um, it provides a really good hold, especially with uh, molding the hair. And uh, we definitely want her bangs to stay straight, her hair to stay straight. And with the extensions, um, it's basically just kind of, and it's a more of an enhancement, you know, because she's great with style to begin with. Uh, you know, she works with people, so she, you know, the makeup's always on point. Her hair is always on point. So this is just more of an enhancement. Uh, just something that locally you can get at a, you know, at the Hair Salon Studio 207. And um, I think she loves it. Do you like it? I love it. Yeah, all right. And you that, saved my hair. <laughs> and that's that. She looks great. I love it. I love it. <laughs>